Hey everyone, thanks for coming by today. We're back with an episode of Coach Carter's Legacy Mode on College Hoops 2K8. And I just wanted to say real quick with certain states shutting down in the US, plus the crazy snowstorm we just got on the East Coast, I just hope everyone's safe out there around the holiday season because I care about you guys and I'll leave my Instagram in the description if you guys ever need anything because I care about y'all. But anyway, regardless, last time out Coach Carter with UTM picked up his first win over a top 25 team, shocking the Kentucky Wildcats thanks to a buzzer beating layup by Marcus Saunders. But in this episode, we take on in-state rival out of conference opponent Belmonts. And if you guys know anything about this series, there's been some crazy matchups against these guys, but I'll touch on that more in a second. For now, let's highlight some of the other top 25 teams as, if you're a Kentucky fan, don't get too down. Maryland, the returning national champions, they lost to in-state opponent Towson, shooting less than 30% from the floor, and Duke also took the L against UNC Greensboro, so yeah, Kentucky, not the only top 25 team dealing with a little bit of adversity here in the season. But as I was saying, yes, Belmont and UTM have had some historic games over the three-year stretch of the series. In year one, David Giles gave Coach Carter his first collegiate coaching win, as he had a three-point buzzer as time expired to put the UT Martin Skyhawks over the Bruins back in year one. And in year two, we were down by one with not much time left. The shot clock was turned off, but Dwight easily came up with a clutch steal to give us a lead as time expired. So some crazy... Uh, matchups here early on in the series as easy also gets us underway here very nice play drawn up to kick us off tonight now we see Beaumont back on the attack as Kai Drayton moves to the elbow and catches and fires and he hits it Drayton one of only two returning starters for Belmont and this might be the weakest Belmont team we've seen so far in the series as they had three starters graduate over the offseason and on the other end we see Christopher Fay putting in the end one Faye's development on the offensive side has been very inviting to watch. He's averaging over 10 points per game in the early portions of his sophomore year as easily turns it over to Vance Price, a freshman as there is Christian Lattimore punching it down on the fast break. Vance Price, a freshman who's actually leading the Belmont Bruins in scoring so far in the early goings, but how about Joey Ballard with an answer? He rips the starting point guard, that is Bryce Covington, who turns it over. Covington a first year starter as Blaine Fry is staying busy on the press break as Ballard finishes this one off as well. Covington trying to fill the shoes of Keontae Grant which is no easy feat. Whenever we faced Beaumont last year Grant was number one in their conference in assists per game as Blaine Fry also sends back Covington's shot and finishes off the layup inside. Nice dish from Dwight Easley. I think one reason why this matchup has been so close in the first two meetings between these two clubs is that they just play so much alike. Both teams like to get out on the open floor full of three-point shooters, and while their defenses aren't stellar by any means, they like to force turnovers, both sides do, as Vance Price, the freshman, picks off easily for his third steal already, and Coach Carter calls timeout. Just too many turnovers for both sides, really, but UT Martin already with five turnovers, and we haven't even spent five minutes in this ballgame so far. Gene Schofield checks in as he assists to Dwight Easley, who makes a three-pointer from the corner, and that's when Dwight Easley is at his best, when he puts the ball on the floor and creates opportunities off the dribble. The Skyhawks back on defense, facing their biggest deficit of the contest so far as Belmont starts to catch fire from the perimeter, but their backup forward misfires that time, and Saunders turns on the Jets and finishes at the rim despite the very good contest from the opposing center. Saunders is flirting with 20 points per game here in the early goings of his junior year as Christian Lattimore receives the pass and scores over the 5'8 Jacques Diggs. Belmont is so good from beyond the arc, guys at all positions can hit for them. And now we see Juco guard transfer Pierre Hamilton checking in as he delivers a pass to Luke Lawton hitting it in traffic from beyond the arc. If Luke Lawton can prove that he can expand his range out to the perimeter and stretch the floor, that'll be a big reason to why he should be starting over Ballard potentially. Now Reed Johnson with the ball for Belmont, they're up by one with four and some change left to go as Ralph Gates also checks in and the freshman guard backing up for Covington, he hits the triple. But on the other end, Evan Schneiderman leading the break and he gets the acrobatic finish to fall. What a shot by the true freshman to cut it to two. So a lot of points in the first half of this game, it's been a bit of a track meet you could say. Both teams going back and forth. But even though UT Martin starting to cut down on the turnovers, their offense is starting to sputter a little bit here as we near the end of the first half. And there is Reed Johnston coming off the bench and hitting a three to make it 33-28. And that score would hold going into the locker room. Belmont up near 60% shooting, five of seven from beyond the arc. 
and turnovers playing a big part in this game. That's really the only time either of these teams have gotten a stop so far. As Christopher Fay with eight, he's the only leading scorer beginning the second half. And Kai Drayton, one of only two returning starters for Belmont, he has nine to lead all scorers. Nice job by the Skyhawks defense. They trapped Price on the baseline. He turns it over and what a dime from Dwight Easley going cross court, finding Saunders in the adjacent corner for only his second field goal of the night. We got to get our top scorer more involved. I've talked about Kai Drayton being one of only two returning starters for the Bruins and there's the other one, Anderson Hilliard getting a shot sent back. As Easley brings it up the other way and it looks like he wants the isolation. He's got the big fella Price on him and he takes him all the way and scores in traffic. Easley with a little bit of an explosion here to begin the second half. He's been up and down so far to begin his junior year, but here in the Belmont game he's played his best. So UTM on the attack with the opportunity to take their first lead in a while as Easley gets trapped out of the zone, but he delivers a nice pass into Faye. And that's one thing we want to see more from Easley is his playmaking take that next step, and he's throwing some nice passes here in this bowl game. Gene Schofield checks in as UT Martin still facing a deficit. Saunders throws up the pump, gets past his man, and he converts again. So Saunders may be starting to get a little bit more traction here in the second half. But Belmont's offense still remaining consistent as on the other end, Jacques Diggs turns it over as he had three of those in the Kentucky game. So maybe Belmont's defense starting to step up a little bit here down the stretch as there's a nice pass from Johnson setting up Lattimore. And one thing we've seen in all three games of the new season is the bench performance has been a little lacking. There's so many new pieces, so many young players coming off the bench. It's definitely going to take some time for them to get used to playing with each other as now even Pierre Hamilton gives it away to the Bruins defense as Johnson kicks it out to Anderson Hilliard who pops the three. Hilliard, a seven footer with some nice touch from outside, he shows it there. And now facing a nine point deficit is now easily in some starters check in, but Dwight gives it away. And Kai Drayton leading Bryce Covington to perfection as the Belmont Bruins are enjoying an 11 to nothing run right now. UT Martin hasn't scored in nearly four minutes as they're looking for a positive play on offense. And there's a good possession as Saunders nails the three. And he has 10 out of his 12 points here in the second half. And now we need some stops on defense. Can't be trading baskets against these red hot Belmont Bruins. And we get the stop we need thanks to Christopher Fay. And Saunders with the outlet pass, a little ambitious. And Vance Price tips it. And then he saves it off of Dwight Easley, the freshman with a veteran play. And at the end of the day, Belmont had a great day on both sides. But it was the little things that put them over the top. Such as Vance Price's hustle right here. And then this would be the tipping of the iceberg, you could say. Price tries to take Lawton one-on-one -on -one as Belmont works it around the left wing. And he goes up against the seven-footer Faye. Nails the layup with the foul. And that would be the nail in the coffin here tonight. Belmont ends up winning in a 16-point victory. 72-56 to is your final. And you could say we were due for, for this uh, game against the Bruins. I mean, we made it out unscathed in two... Um, heartbreaking losses for Belmont, but they finally get their revenge here in year three. So as we move forward, we got two more games before our preseason tournament. One against Lipscomb, who we're favored against, and then we have a tough road game against St. Louis. So let's see what we do in those two games as we look over to the schedule, and we see that we do take down Lipscomb in an 80-68 to ball game. And check out some of the performances from the team. We have Jacques Diggs with a new career high off the bench, 15 for him. Saunders in a statement game, nine made free throws and three made three balls for 26 points. And Dwight Easley had a good performance despite something that happened in this game. We'll get to that in a second. Lipscomb could not stop UT Martin in the second half, 46 points as a team, but we didn't come out unscathed from that victory. Dwight Easley with a minor injury. He's gonna be playing hurt through shin splints. And Evan Schneiderman, the backup power forward, true freshman, picked up a dislocated finger in the game as well. Easley's injury is a little bit more manageable than Schneiderman, but still, this is going to hurt going forward, especially against a team like St. Louis. They come from the Atlantic 10, and that conference is no joke. One of the better sleeper conferences in the NCAA for sure. And they do a lot of their damage with their big fellas, as they have five out of their top six scorers as forwards. So... A lot of damage from inside the paint from these guys. They on their own accord are a little dinged up too. They're missing Kenton Feeney, their fourth top scorer. Anthony Scannelbury will be filling in for him at the three position. 
and they're also missing Ty State in their backup point guard. So the Billikens a little bit hobbled as well. So maybe we're in line for another upset. Let's just travel to St. Louis and see what we can do. But with Dwight Easley being a little bit hobbled, Pierre Hamilton will step in for his first college start in aid of the injured junior. We'll be coming off the bench this game, but Coach Carter has liked what he's seen so far from the Juco transfer Hamilton, and he wants to see him in an extended role as there's a nice job getting himself open. Pierre Hamilton, of all people, gets us off the floor, and he's the first one to collect points here against the Billikens defense. And now Hamilton sets up Fry pretty well, who makes an even nicer pass to Saunders out on the perimeter. A quick 5-0 start for the Skyhawks, as Saunders wants to continue his shot shooting ways to begin year 3. And now with the shot clock winding down, how about Faye with a strong move inside? Off of the spin, using his body to create some space. And he attacked plenty of big fellas in the paint as St. Louis, they got no shortage of big guys on this team. St. Louis definitely much more of a defensive oriented team than Belmont as they force a stop here. Not a lot of scoring to begin the game, but how about this dish from Feeney leading Anthony Scannelbury for his first basket of the night. Only 17 combined points for both sides, however, as St. Louis takes their first lead of the ball game. Dwight Easley and others check in, and how about the hobble Dwight Easley with the rainbow off the bench? If he can provide a little bit of a spark even though hobbled, that'll go a long way with some of these guys and fueling them into an upset win. And now Jacques Diggs, who's been a little up and down to begin his freshman campaign, he wants the ISO and he looked confident on that drive to the basket, giving UT Martin the lead by right back. And now Bronson Slater, 1-on-1 against Dwight Easley, maybe taking advantage of the injured heat easily as he pulls it from the three-point line off the dribble as Dwight looked a little bit slow closing out there. Maybe the injury had a part of it there. And now working the ball around, it's Schofield going across the key, kicks it back out to Saunders as they beat the zone to perfection. Maybe one reason why our offense is so up and down is we've just seen so much zone to begin this year. And now the Billikens are doing the same thing, but how about the pass from Pierre Hamilton out of the shot, leading Dominique Cleveland for a rare basket. Pierre Hamilton, a great look there. Going up with the shot, faking like he was, drawing an extra defender which left Cleveland wide open. And now Hamilton creates the angle to get the pass into Fry and creating a lane for him as well. We've seen a lot of great dishing from Pierre Hamilton and that's something that this team has lacked in years past. Just a true point guard, no shade at Easley, but just having a guy who can man the offense like Pierre Hamilton has, yeah that'll go a long way for sure. Another stop by UT Martin, 27-25 as the give is over to Saunders, and he's got an exploitable matchup, just gives the jab, leading to a smooth jump shot, 11 for Saunders so far in the ballgame. UT Martin trying to play spoiler, up by 5 with 2 minutes to go as Pierre Hamilton looks inside, threads the needle to Faye, and he puts it up and in, and it's interesting because... Faye and Fry, yeah, they've been doing pretty good on offense, but this is against a team with a lot of quality bigs, and they still combined for 13 points in the first quarter. Only two missed shots combined between the two big guys for UT Martin. And the Skyhawks up by seven going into the half. Potentially another upset win as Saunders leads all scorers with 11 points on the ball game on 44% shooting. And Pierre Hamilton, his first start at the D1 college level, he's got four points and three assists, one of one from the floor, so not bad on his end either. And how about Schneiderman with the post move over the smaller defender? He's playing a little bit dinged up, but there's his first basket as Nick Larson hands this one off to Kenton Feeney, who makes the end one. Bit of a questionable call, wouldn't you say? I'm not sure who bumped him, I guess. Uh, Schneiderman maybe got a piece of him running behind, but there's a big end one for St. Louis as they try to claw their way back in the game. A high usage rate for Saunders tonight as he has 11, but on a lot of shots to get those 11 points as he panics on the baseline, try to take the mismatch, but that one's picked off by Anthony Scannelbury. And now here comes Bronson Slater resetting the offense, or so he thought. He pulls it from way downtown. He's getting a bit of an extended run tonight due to some injuries to the Billikens guards. And now Saunders again wants to take a drive, and he shakes two Billikens defenders. And that might have been one of the best drives we've ever seen from Saunders in his two and a half year career here at UTM. And that's saying a lot because he's had a lot of nice ones over the years. One of the best slashers Coach Carter's ever coached. But that doesn't mean he can't pull up from beyond the arc as well. You guys know Saunders, he can hit from anywhere. And another nice dish for Hamilton. He's doing a good job really orchestrating this offense. 
It's been interesting to see their scoring strategy for the Billikens, as in the first half it was mostly their big guys doing the damage, and now in the second half their guards are starting to get more involved, but as they run a play for a guard, that was Bronson Slater who has his layup spiked in the floor by Faye, and it's Luke Lawton punching it down on the other end. Faye and Lawton, the two freshmen last year, they get it done together. But the Billikens trying to avoid the upset, that's Breland Pearson who has an answer for Lawton's jam. So a lot of reserves on both sides on the floor for both teams, including the dinged up easily as there's Davis Valentine finding Kenton Feely on the interior for St. Louis' first second half lead. But this is when things can get a little bit hairy. You guys have seen the bench performances in year three have been a little lackluster. So much turnover, so many new faces and freshmen in that second unit. They need to come together and gel, create a few stops. And that's what Gene Schofield does here as Joey Ballard goes aerial. Oh my goodness, Joey Ballard with no regard for human life. Save the women and children. Oh man. Ooh, man, I'm sure whenever Joey Ballard hangs it up, that might be his favorite moment from his college career here at UTM. So we're back on top, back on the offensive end as Pierre Hamilton and Faye run a nice pick and roll, but it goes through the hands of Faye. And PJ Herman needs the break as he continues his extraordinary second half. All 11 of his points have come in the final 15 minutes. St. Louis back on top. So now we're back on the attack with our biggest possession of the ball game, and we're going to go to you-know-who. Marcus Saunders takes his man one-on-one. -on -one. He's hesitating. What has he got in his bag? Pulls up, fouled, and completes the end one. Oh, boy, what a play by Saunders. Bit of an interesting strategy there as he kind of just stood there with the ball a little bit, but the pump fake got um, Herman up in the air, and he was able to finish another end one as he's become almost a wizard of sorts with converting buckets through traffic. So now we jump with two minutes left. Pierre Hamilton at the controls. 10 seconds left to shoot. Still with the lead is UT Martin. As Hamilton hands it off to Faye. And he leaves the layup short. Very unfortunate roll there. Couldn't get it to leak in. And now here comes Bronson Slater leading the attack. Larson throws it inside to Kenton Feeney. Posting up Schofield but he hands it off. And there is Feeney with the assist to Robert Coleman. So the Billikens back out in front with 60 seconds left to go. We're seeing a lot more Schofield here down the stretch because Blaine Fry's had a good day, but he's in foul trouble. Three seconds left here. Hamilton for the lead, and that one rims off. So Billikens with possession and the lead. We'll do another this down to 40 seconds left. Bronson Slater feeds Anthony Scannelberry. He goes one-on-one. -on -one. Double team comes. Feeney tries it. No good, but Scannelberry with a huge rebound. Shot clock turns off, and now UT Martin's going to be forced to foul. But we know what Coach Carter's method is here at the end of these games. He likes to tell his players to go for the steal first before fouling and Schofield almost gets it done. And you can tell the 6-7 forward wanted that one bad. So now the Billikens step up, hit 2 of 2. That was Bronson Slater with some good work from the charity stripe here in the clutch. Another situation here where it comes down to one possession. We've seen a lot of this in the early season. 15 seconds left to play. Billiken sporting that 2-3 zone. Skillfield works it around to Saunders. He thinks about it from the corner. 9 seconds left. Saunders receives a screen. Hamilton back to Saunders. Step back. They're playing hot potato. They're going to have to get it off. 2 seconds. Saunders hits it. And this one's going to go into overtime. Thanks to more late game heroics by you already know who. So 61 tied as Slater tries the full court heave and that one's off the mark. How about Saunders? Another clutch basket here in his junior season. And Pierre Hamilton did a good job getting him that look. Six assists in his first D1 college start. So thanks to some good work in the post, Christopher Faye puts us ahead and he's doing it on defense too. Comes up with a steal and how about the assist from Hamilton? His seventh of the night and that might be his best one. Just threading the needle, Hamilton with a showcase of dimes here. UTM looking pretty good here in the overtime period. About half the time drained off the clock and they're looking for the knockout punch. Bilkin still in the 2-3 zone and you know what you got to do to beat that. You have to have a man flashing to the middle. That's exactly what Schofield does here. And Hamilton for the knockout punch. What an offensive possession. That is exactly picture perfect how to beat that zone. And I think that's the dagger right there. UT Martin holds on and victorious in another upset win, this time traveling to St. Louis to get it done. 71-68 is your final, 7-7 seven seven from Pierre Hamilton as he showed that this offense will be in very good hands once easily and Saunders graduate. 
Saunders, 28, and of course another clutch shot to get it done to take us to that extra period of play. Overall, just a really good game from top to bottom. And that includes our big guys too. I was wondering how Faye and Fry were going to go to battle against this very tall St. Louis team, but they combined it for 10 of 12. Even though Fry was facing some foul trouble in the second half, he looked very good as well. So as we move on, we look towards to our preseason tournament as we face South Carolina Upstate in the first round, and then we're going to face the winner of Loyola, Chicago, and Howard. Once again, South Carolina Upstate, another game that we're favored in by a pretty good margin. This might be the weakest opponent we face all year, and we're probably going to face the Ramblers of Loyola, a team that needs no introduction, but let's see if we can get it done against South Carolina Upstate, and we do. Only 12 for Marcus Saunders, but he only took 9 shots, so an efficient day from him. Pierre Hamilton with another solid day running the show. And Blaine Fry with a double-double, 13 from Faye, and easily with a statement game, 18 for him, saying to the coach, hey, I'm ready to go for this championship game against Loyola. But another win that came at a cost. Joey Ballard, you see, only played 4 minutes, and there's a reason for that, unfortunately. He has suffered a broken ankle in the victory. Wow. Our first major injury of the series, and you hate to see this happen to any young kid. So he'll be out for about a month and a half nursing this injury, but we have to look forward as we go up against Loyola Chicago, who isn't totally healthy on their own accord. Arthur Richardson, their top scorer, he's going to miss the game tonight, but it doesn't mean they don't have firepower in other areas. Rayshon Reeves will be doing a lot of the scoring, Terry Joyner. Um, a lightning quick point guard, Troy Sutton, a powerful wing who can do it from inside or out. Loyola Chicago does have a better overall than us on paper. So once again, another game that even though we're not favored this time, a game that we should be in and should compete. So let us dive into Corpus Christi, Texas, where the preseason tournament is being held. One of the most southernest cities in the entire United States of America. UT Martin sports an early two-point lead as they try to become victorious here in this preseason tournament. Luke Lawton is aiding the void filled by Joey Ballard. He's going to be starting at the three. And Dwight Usley makes his return as Christopher Fay with the drop step move. He scores. Fay and these other Skyhawk post players are definitely going to have to take advantage with no Arthur Richardson in the lineup for Loyola Chicago. He's their only senior on this team, so that's a big veteran presence they're missing in the low post as Saunders also takes this one to the cup for a second field goal. Both clubs off to a good start offensively, 18-15 Skyhawks with 6.43 left to go in the first half as Reeves gives this one out to Russell Carey as the 6'5 junior guard from Chicago has his second triple of the night. And now here is Troy Sutton trying to deliver a layup, good contest from Jacques Days and company underneath. And look at the lead pass by Pierre Hamilton coming off games with 7 and 8 assists. He is still coming off the bench and delivering dimes. And now we see Hamilton running with the starting five here with four minutes left to play. Saunders hands this one off to Chris Fay, and he delivers a nice dime, nice teamwork. Fay to Fry as they go high to low, and we've seen a lot of that here in the first half. Just a lot of points in the paint, really trying to exploit that lack of Arthur Richardson inside. And meanwhile, while UT Martin is pounding the rock in the low post, Loyola, a team that needs no introduction, they keep stroking it from outside as there is former walk-on Jermaine Bauer hitting one. If you guys saw their Final Four run a few years ago, you already know what this team is made of. They live and die by the three. ill by shot attempt there by Joyner, but it's still kicked out as Bauer hits again. Luke Lawton's contest was good, but <laughs> right now this team is hot and they're not missing anything as here is Bauer again with a foot on the line. Nice pass from Joyner as he weaved that one around Lawton. As Bauer continues to lead this Loyola team to a late first half surge. So with six seconds left, Faye the long inbounds pass as easily pushes it across the timeline. Two seconds left, setback, Saunders in the face of Joyner. And that three will halt this momentum a little bit, hopefully from the Red Hot Ramblers. Saunders with an incredible shot to cut it to six as we head to the locker room. Loyola at 76% shooting, that's inexcusable. On top of, on offense, we're taking advantage of the lack of Arthur Richardson, Faye and Fry have combined for 14 of the Skyhawks 29, but on defense, getting out rebounded, only 14 rebounds as a unit, so that should just tell you just how hot this team is. And unfortunately, it didn't seem like Saunders' step back three did a lot to halt this momentum as there's Joyner again, this one hitting in the face of Easley, and these guys can't miss. 
And after another tray ball by Loyola, we find ourselves down 14 as Easley passes out of the post as Lawton is hit on his jump shot and he knocks it through. How about Lawton with some threes here in his sophomore year here and there? If Lawton can expand his range a bit, like I said before, that'll be big as that's something that Joey Bauer just never really has had. So now still down by seven, ten and a half left to go in the game as Easley gives this one off to Saunders. Loyola switches back to a man-to-man -man and you see Saunders' eyes light up. He could take advantage of the court was wide open as he has an easy take to the cup that he put a little bit of flavor on there at the end. Goes with the baby cross and then with the reverse to get it around the defender. So now down by eight, ten minutes left to go. Justin Cannon gives this one off to Liam Lawson. No good. Rebound by Faye, his fifth as easily he's pushing the ball up and he sees the trailer fry great dish inside as fry puts it on top of justin cannon who gives up a few inches on fry and as loyola's shooting comes back to down to earth a little bit we see the skyhawks on a bit of a run it's now seven as here is jermaine bauer feeding it inside to miguel bartlett who scores plus the foul so there's the equalizer for fries and one and the starting five needs a bit of a breather so uh, the bench comes back in with 8.50 left to go, Jacques Diggs clutch, catches it clean off the inbound, throws up the pump, and from 18 feet out, that one is good. We need some baskets from the bench as we dwindle this down to 6 minutes left to go. Starters come back in with the exclusion of Dwight Easley, now down by 12, so a pretty shaky bench performance again as Faye drops it in over the inferior defender once again, so 14 for Faye. But the thesis of tonight was whenever UTM had a bit of a spark, the Loyola Ramblers had an answer for it as Tyler Sutton knocks down yet another triple. And that would be all she wrote on this game. But UTM made it pretty competitive at the end, went on a little bit of a surge of their own, but it was just going to be all for naught. So a loss here in the championship of our preseason tournament, further adding to just the weird storyline beginning this season. Another loss against a team that was at our level. That was pretty exploitable. They didn't have their top score. But 20 points for Saunders. Easily comes back and has 9 points, 5 assists. Great passing day, but only 2 of 7 shooting. And maybe we should have pounded the rock inside a little bit more as Faye and Fry had 25, but they only got that on 14 shots. So maybe should have done some more work in the post. And Lawton, his first career start, chips in 4, 2, and a steal. So like I said, just a very weird start to year three. Right now we're still working out some of the kinks in the bench rotation. That on top of UTM seems poised in big games against premier programs like Kentucky or even an Atlantic 10 team like St. Louis. But for some reason they've just had trouble getting over the hump against teams in their range level in terms of overall. So it's just been a very weird part of the season, right? We're just working out some kinks. It's the first time we've had this much turnover in the series with of course the five freshmen. So coming up next is definitely going to be the biggest make or break part of our schedule. We open up conference play in the next episode and I'm going to talk about it more in the next time out but I'm going to tell you guys why this might be the most favorable year for UTM to win their conference and finally break into March Madness. Not only is there a lot of new faces for UTM, but a lot of the premier players across the OVC have graduated. There was a big class that left last year, including Jasper Powell, NBA prospect, and a lot of other guys, Corey Barnes on Murray State, arrivals. He was a big sniper. So a lot of guys who graduated may make this conference a lot easier to win this year as UT Martin, not the only team dealing with adversity. So we open up conference play next time out biggest part of our schedule. This is going to tell us what team we have on our hands here in near three. If we continue down the road we are struggling against teams that are in our range level in terms of overall, then we're not going to get very far in OVC play. But if we finally work out the kinks and use what we did well in the UK game and in the St. Louis game to win some ball games, then I think we're going to be just fine. So stay tuned for that next time here on the Coach Carter College Hoops 2K Legacy Mode Series.